Every year we know these three weeks in which we mourn the absence of the Beis HaMikdash, Hashem's divine intense presence in our life, an absence which is responsible for so much doubt and uncertainty, for so much pain and suffering. And it comes about because of baseless hatred. Every year we talk about, we hear about sinas chinam, but we don't feel ourselves guilty of it. We're all pretty decent, pretty nice people. Baseless hatred? Hatred? Do we hate one another? And do we do so for no reason at all? So I want to share with you a form of baseless hatred, which in a way, every one of us is guilty of. We're not cruel, we're not mean to one another. But the fact is that we are cruel in one way. When we fail to give one another the benefit of the doubt, it's an act of cruelty. People who are our friends, our family members, even though when it comes to ourselves, we rationalize, we justify, we defend every deficiency, every indiscretion, every poor judgment, but with the people around us, we're exacting. We hold an accounting. For the people around us, we see the wrong, the bad that they do, and we jump to assume what they do is wrong, is incorrect, that they are guilty. We can all do an incredibly better job at being Dama Eskarla Adam Lekafschus, of having the benefit of the doubt when it comes to other people. The Gemara in Baba Basra tells us in Daf Samach on the base, Kshot Atzmecha, the Acherkach Kshot Achirim, which usually is translated as correct yourself and only then seek to correct others. But it first says the word Kshot, as in Baruch Shemei, Kshot means be truth, be truthful, be honest. Kshot Atzmecha means be honest with yourself. Look in the mirror, realize none of us are perfect before we expect perfection from the people around us. All around us are people who are doing their best. They're trying their hardest. And if we cut them some slack, if we realize that life is not easy for them, it's not easy for us, we're not perfect and neither are they. That is a form of avas chinam. It's how we can show love during this period of the three weeks. It's how we can restore relationships. It's how we can rebuild the Beis HaMikdash one brick at a time. You know, they say when you point a finger at somebody, you're pointing three fingers back at yourself. How often we see someone else having done something wrong when the truth is it's our own mistake, it's our own judgment, it's our own misunderstanding of the situation. If only we'd be more generous in giving people the benefit of the doubt. The sixth Mishnah in the opening parak of Mishnah of Pirkei Yavas tells us, Make yourself a rav, choose a rabbi, and acquire for yourself a friend and judge everyone around you favorably. And the question is, what does that third sentence have to do with the second? What does judging other people favorably have to do with acquiring a friend? Rav Menachem Ben-Zion Zaks in his commentary on Perkei Avos explains so beautifully that the capacity to give others the benefit of the doubt is a prerequisite to being a good friend. You can't be a good friend and look to catch people, to be better than people, to assume the worst in people, to be angry at people. To be a good friend, the prerequisite of a good friend, is a willingness to look the other way, to let things go, to give the benefit of the doubt, to cut some slack, to assume the best, not the worst. Because after all, Shlomo HaMelech said that ain't tzadik bar tasher ya'as There's no perfect person. We know we're not perfect and we excuse ourselves. We have to make room for the people around us to be imperfect too, to judge people favorably. That's what it means to be a good friend to understand, to be happy and satisfied and love people with their imperfections, to have the confidence that you'll be loyal, to give the benefit of the doubt and not to assume to rush to judgment. So what? Someone didn't text you back or call you back immediately. Maybe they didn't get the message. Or maybe they were preoccupied with something incredibly important. So what? They don't reciprocate the meal you had them for Shabbos or Yom Tif. Maybe they can't afford to host guests the way that you can. Maybe they're insecure about their ability to run a Shabbos or a Yom Tif table. So they said hello and they shook hands with other people at the Kiddush. And they made you feel invisible. Maybe they never saw you to begin with. To be a good friend is to give the benefit of the doubt. It's to assume the best, not the worst. It's to be flexible and to cut other people slack. Rabbi Menachem Metzin and Zaks points out the Mishnah subtly includes this strategy for how to be generous with others when it says, Haveidan es ha'adam lekav schos, not ha'adam es kol ha'adam. Don't just judge a portion of a person, a person in their worst moment, a person when they're stressed out, in the sliver of time that you interacted with them. Dan es kol ha'adam. Look at the whole picture. Look at your history. Look at the longevity of that relationship. And realize that one mistake doesn't have to define the whole thing. Be generous, be flexible, be loving. Cut slack, give the benefit of the doubt, see the good. Ian McLaren once said, be kind to everyone you meet, 
Everyone's fighting a battle you know nothing about. The truth is we don't know what's going on in other people's lives. And therefore, during these three weeks, we can express love. We can make sure not to violate baseless hatred, even or especially to the people closest to us, by giving them the benefit of the doubt, by realizing we have no idea what people are battling. And just like when we're fighting something that we're private about, and we hope the people around us will cut us some slack, if we cut each other slack, we can build the Beis Amikdash, one gesture of love, one benefit of the doubt at a time.